Good morning, guys. It's an absolutely beautiful day today. The nights are getting down to about minus 12 and minus 18 at night. The days are now below zero degrees. So winter has definitely come and it happens very fast in Mongolia. So on the last episode, I explained that Zula and Flame are away for a few weeks and that I have a couple of things that I need to get done around the homestead. And one of them is this geothermal greenhouse. You know, we started this project about a year ago. The good problem that we have at the moment is that it's minus two outside, but it's 30 degrees inside the greenhouse, which is a really good problem to have, but it is still a problem. So we need to go and sort that out so we can bring the temperature down a little bit during the day and warm it up a little bit. At night. Okay, wait, I need to get out of my clothes first. Wow, really nice in here. I had to open the doors and the window bring the temperature down. I've been in here a couple of days and it gets hard when it's plus 30. So what I've done so far over the last few days, done all the wiring for the fan controllers and for the linear actuators so to make it automatic, stored electricity to the greenhouse with its own breaker switch, electricity to the woodshed and to the chicken coop so they can have some heating when it gets really, really cold. Eventually this is all gonna get connected to the inverter so that can be off grid on solar only for now that is all installed now i want to get these boxes installed i'm going to get them onto the wall before we start running all the cables to all the windows what we're going to do we have four windows that we're going to put on automatic linear actuators so those windows can open automatically and close depending on the temperature that i have set we're also going to install two fans those fans will be able to push hot air during the day into the ground, warm up the ground, and at night extract that warmth that we've saved during the day. We wanna get these boxes all installed. I'm gonna get them onto the wall, and then I'll explain what everything is, and then we can start wiring it up. All these cables that are over here have been put in for a couple of days from the University of Mongolia. We're working with one of the professors there, so he's taking a very good interest and this project because this is the first passive solar greenhouse with geothermal in mongolia so the university is taking a big interest and i've seen the data for the last three days plus i've been running the temperature logger for the last three days and wow it's it's looking very very promising let's get that job done and i explain the rest This is drywall. That's why we're using these. When you turn it, it expands. got the three control boxes installed on the wall. I'm going to go through each one and explain a little bit about what they are for. The reason I'm doing this is when I started researching geothermal greenhouses and how to control them, there's not that much information on how to build a controller. Thanks to a real dear friend of mine, Rob, who has a geothermal greenhouse in England. I will link the video when we went to go and visit him and he showed us how to build this and he's given me all the advice on putting it together. Big shout out Rob, thank you so much. But I wanna show you guys that some of you might find it this very, very interesting and there isn't a video out there explaining this. So we'll go through it. This is going to be our 230 volt controller. This is gonna be 12 volt and this is our 12 volt as well. The first box, this is going to be the controller 230 volts to control the two fans at the back of the greenhouse, which will be heating and cooling the greenhouse. Here, 230 volts coming in, and it's going to these two bridges. We then have 230 volts cable running to the 12 volt DC power supply. Then we'll have two powers running to this front box. On the front box, we have two STC 1000s. One is gonna be for heating, one is gonna be for cooling. When we set these to the temperatures that we want, we want the fans to 
come on in the day when the temperature is say 18 degrees so then it can start to take the hot air and put it into the ground. At night, when the temperature goes down, maybe to about 12 degrees, the other one will kick on and turn the fan on, and then the hot air from the ground will come into the greenhouse at night. These are four switches. If the fan is off and you just wanna to test to see that it works, you can turn the fan on or you can turn the fan off. The other one is if the fan is on and you want to just kill it, you can just turn the fan off. Then we have two speed controllers to adjust the speed of the fans because you want this, the fans running at different speeds for heating and for cooling. This is all the 230 volt stuff to control the fans. The other two boxes, these are going to be to control the linear actuators to open and close the windows automatically. This is the boxes to set up. Over here is a 12 volt power supply. This is a 30 amp, you don't have to have so big, but anyway, we have it this big. Over here, I have just a simple fuse box so that if there's any strain on the motors or something like that, I'd rather trip a fuse than to burn out a linear actuator. This is gonna be the control box for the four linear actuators. This is the front of the box. On the front of the box, I have four ST1000s and they're both all set at cooling. I can have different temperatures that I can open up the windows or close the windows individually. And of course, these are bypasses, so I could just open or close the windows manually. All the STC 1000s have their own temperature probe. So all those temperature probes from the STC 1000s, we're gonna run to a good place in the greenhouse. All these STC 1000s are then connected to relays. I struggled to quite understand what a relay is and how it actually works. Thanks, Rob. This is the relay. It has different pins in it. We're not gonna to go too much into detail, but 230 volts going to the 12 volt converter. That's going to this box, which is then getting divided up on the inputs and they are all bridged. At the bottom part of the relay, you have coming in from the STC 1000s and you're going out to the linear actuators. When the temperature is set that you want it and it changes, it sends it to the relay and the relay then operates the linear actuator and tells it what to do and when to do it. Yes, a lot of wiring, but it looks good. To get this all wired up so they're all connected. I've pre-wired everything so it's very simple for me just to connect it all together. And if there's any problems, it's easy just to disconnect it. To get these all connected, the temperature probes, we need to run that to the middle of the room, run wiring to the linear actuators, get the fan connected, and then we can turn all of this on. I hope any of that made sense. Once you get your mind around how it all connects, you can do it in any way that you want, any kind of box, any style. It's really simple and not expensive to set up at all. Once you understand it, you can put this all together yourself and you can control your greenhouse. You can control anything. The STC 1000s and the, this and the linear actuators. You can make anything automated. Fantastic. Let's crack on and get this wired up. So. I ran the one cable across the roof and of course the first cable is always the most difficult because I need to run three linear actuators on the other side I need to run three cables so I took that cable down because now I know the exact measurement and I'm taking three cables cut it into the same measurement and then I'll install all three cables at one time that will be much easier three times 18 meters to make my life easier I've just done a simple no tape bigger tape small tape on all ends so I know which one is for which linear actuator. I'm gonna put them all together and every meter or so, I'm just gonna take a black wire tie, simple like that, wire tie, all three together at a meter, snip it, and that's gonna be much easier to run the cable on the roof.
and there we go. All the cables for the linear actuators are run. I have a few more cables that I need to run, but it's not very exciting to watch. So I'll get back to you as soon as all the cables are done. This morning I just was running some extra cable covers and connecting up the last of the sensors probes that are going to be on running on the roof. Before we connect all this up we're going to start installing the fans. These are the two fans that we got. These are made in Sweden. They are very nice fans. Because the pipes are different sizes to the pans we had to get these little brackets made up so that it can fit because our pipes are a little bit different size than the fan. But the nice thing about these fans and why we put the money into having really good fans is that they're very energy efficient. And not only that, they're going to be running at 47 dB, which is much quieter than some of the Chinese ones, which are like 70 dB, very loud. But we have two of these now. We have two pipes at the back that run underground all the pipings and they come out in the front install these two fans on the back piping and we're also going to run some piping to the roof so that we can start taking in the hot air during the day and once we have the fans done we can start to put in the linear actuators and get this all sorted out They were quite tall, so I want to bring it down so it's easier to access the fan. Both fans are now on. I need to just get some nice brackets so I can just secure them onto the pipe and the pipe that's going to go up to the roof i need to secure that too i don't have that but i can pick that up tomorrow or something at least the fans are on which is really really good now i can focus on this i need to put the boxes back on reconnect everything strip some cables so i'm going to do that quickly and then once i have everything connected we can go through the whole system before we turn it on Finally, I have everything connected, wired up. The only thing that we still need to connect up is the brackets for the linear actuators. I'll show you that in a second, but at least we have all the main wiring up. This is a really, really exciting moment. We have been building this for over a year, and today we're gonna to turn it on. Let's switch it on. So, the ultimate test. Power. My calculation is correct, this should turn the fans on. Yeah. Yeah, everything's going. A bit dangerous at the moment, we're still gonna put the piping up. And here the air is coming out. Woo! Very, very exciting. This one, air coming out. Of course, it's nice and cool, the ground Three meters down is about eight degrees. So that's gonna help cool down the greenhouse on hot days. This fan is going. So let me show you the system. Turn the fans off first. So this is the system for running the geothermal part of this greenhouse. This is the controller box that controls the fans. This one is for all the linear actuators. This is 
the linear actuator haven't put it on yet not sure if we're going to need to have it this winter but we're going to install it in a day or two it just needs uh, an extra hand to to put them on but we'll have four windows so i have four temperature controls for all four windows we're going to want the windows maybe to open up at different temperatures so we can adjust and control the temperature of the greenhouse so if we have it say set at 25 degrees at 25 degrees this will extend opening the window as soon as it gets below that it will close very very simple we couldn't find a bracket for installing the linear actuators so i just got one made up i just need to spray it so the linear actuator will attach to that and attach to the window very simple well guys what can i say that was uh, absolutely fantastic that everything works and i can start this geothermal system but this is great having this installed now that it's connected and the geothermal system is on this makes it the first full passive solar greenhouse with a geothermal system in mongolia that is actually operating at the moment it won't be the last there are many people that are starting to build and this is going to drastically change produce here in mongolia this is really 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 fantastic we're busy fixing the underfloor heating in the house as well so as soon as that is done i'll come and finish off the linear actuators and get all the piping installed properly clean up everything before zula gets back guys thank you so much really really appreciate all the comments and likes and all the new subscribers to the channel is absolutely fantastic we're over the moon we love you guys so much and we'll see you in the next one bye Woo.